بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Allah tells us in Surah Fusilat Allah says that there were some people who would tell others to make sure to never listen to the Quran وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَا تَسْمَعُوا لِهَذَا الْقُرْآنِ وَالْغَوْ فِيهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَغْلِبُونَ Allah mentions that there were some serious uh, haters when it came to Islam, when it came to the Prophet wasallam. very unfortunately, obviously. And one of their key ta- tactics would be that they would tell people, don't listen to the Qur'an. Now notice the specific avenue, the specific faculty they mention is that of hearing. So they would go and they would tell people, don't listen to the Qur'an. لا تسمعوا لهذا القرآن والغو فيه لعلكم تغلبون So they would go and tell people they would go and tell the common folk uh, don't listen to this Quran لا تسمعوا لهذا القرآن don't listen to this Quran even though it's right here even though it's right in front of you even though uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is right here within the city of Mecca because Surah Fusilat is a Meccan Surah they're telling people, the common folk from within Mecca and then even pilgrims who would come for their version of Hajj, you know, they would come to Mecca for that purpose. So they would tell, these are like the, the chief haters of the Prophet ﷺ. They would tell people, don't listen to this Qur'an. So they knew that it was right there. They knew that access to the Prophet was right there. Access to the Qur'an was right there. But they would tell people, don't listen to this Qur'an. لا تسمعوا لهذا القرآن and in addition to that if you do happen to come across the recitation of the Quran to make noise لعلكم تغلبون to make noise you know to, to, to talk about nonsense whatever it may be um, so that you may be victorious so they were trying to convince people that it was in their better interest to never listen to the Quran to avoid the Quran altogether specifically as it relates to listening. If you notice throughout the Qur'an, the main avenue to the heart that Allah mentions in connection with the Qur'an is not necessarily the eyes, is not necessarily reading, although that's there. ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِي هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ That is the book in which there is no doubt and it's guidance for the God-fearing, it's guidance for people of taqwa. That is mentioned But the most common thing that's mentioned throughout the Qur'an as it relates to connecting with the Qur'an is through the avenue of the ears. In addition to that, generally speaking, you find hearing, listening, placed very consistently before vision. So hearing is mentioned before seeing time and time again in the Qur'an as it relates to various things. If you look at uh, if you look at Surah Al-Ahqaf, when Allah talks about the people of Ad uh, after they they uh, after they rejected their prophet Prophet Hud salam and his message that of worshiping God alone, after that whole situation happened, Allah says that He established them and He gave them three things. First, Allah mentions hearing, and then vision, and then reflection, intelligence. What's the first one that, that Allah highlights though? That of hearing, right? The, this ability to hear is an incredible blessing that Allah has given us, right? So we should try our best to use it in ways pleasing to Allah, especially as it relates to the Qur'an, especially as it relates to hearing the Qur'an, listening to the Qur'an, right? Oftentimes, uh, people may think that the only way to connect with the Qur'an is through, is through vision, is through seeing, is through looking at a mushaf. There's no doubt that's good, that's very good. But another way that's often overlooked, unfortunately, is that of listening, is to connect with the Qur'an through our ears. And this is actually the primary way that, uh, that connecting with the Qur'an is mentioned within the, uh, within, the, within the Qur'an itself. In addition to that, what was the response of the companions to the Prophet? قَالُوا سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا They responded by saying, we hear and we obey, right? So the importance of hearing 
So let's ask ourselves, what, what do we typically listen to and why? How is our relationship with the Qur'an in general, especially as it relates to listening to the Qur'an? Think of the Prophet himself, والسلام, the Prophet and Nabi al-Ummi, right? He, he was a Prophet who, who could not read or write. You could say he was illiterate, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So he, if he couldn't read or write, then how did, how did he uh, learn the Qur'an, right, without actually reading from a copy of something? Again, that's good. There's nothing wrong in that. That's very good, mashallah. But don't underestimate the power of listening, the power of hearing, right? Maybe someone, uh, you know, when driving, they can spend five minutes at the beginning of their drive, right, to listen to some Qur'an. I promise you those five minutes will have a positive effect on you and on your drive, inshallah. Let's take some time. Let's connect with the Qur'an if we can. Five minutes a day, especially as it relates to listening to Qur'an. Five minutes a day. Uh, Allah says, and I'll conclude with this in Surah Al-Mulk. Allah says that He gave us uh, three different things. It's actually the same things. Uh, these are the same things that were mentioned in Surah Ahqaf. And it's in the same order. Allah is telling us something here, right? Uh, Allah says that he created us he brought us into existence and he gave us the ability to hear hearing is mentioned first and foremost the ability to see and the ability to reflect and then Allah says right? uh, very few people are actually grateful right? very few people actually use these faculties in ways that bring them closer to Allah. May Allah make us from among them. May Allah make us from among the grateful. May Allah make us from among the few. وَقَلِيلٌ مِنْ عِبَادِيَ الشَّكُورِ May Allah make us from among them. أَمْنِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ